Hello out there, you bastards and imps. Welcome to the final episode of Thrones of Game, the Game of Thrones podcast where we watch the series backwards. If you've never heard the show before, why are you starting at the end? That's dumb. Don't do that. <laughs> My name is BT Calloway. I've already seen the show twice now. And joining me is Elliot J. O'Neill, who has seen Game of Thrones. I've seen Game of Thrones yeah, now. You've seen it. Yay! <laughs> I, I can finally talk about this cultural touchstone with everybody <laughs> Two and a bit years after it finished airing. Yes, and that was this historic day. We've done it. It's done. We reached the end. We finished. We've gone all the way backwards. That's it. Because we just watched season one, episode one, entitled Winter is Coming. But was that a, an episode one? That means Scotch. Hey. <laughs> Scotch of Thrones. We don't have another new one. We do have the how the, the opening sound. Well, no, because we have had this Scotch before, but yeah. not on the podcast. Oh, that's right. We just busted it out one night when Danny was hanging out with us and we were like, it's delicious. Then yeah. we polished the whole fucking thing Yeah, off. this is the Mortlock Six Kingdoms 15-year-old. It is good. And that's the sound of the <laughs> lid going off. All right. And I uh, didn't get the sound of it being Just unsheathed from the, the bottom. <laughs> it's that a good, very satisfying. It was a better sound than I thought. <laughs> yep. And yeah, getting the full the unboxing experience. Mm-hmm. You know, they're so popular on YouTube. They must be popular for podcasts. I've got the sounds of unboxing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the idea for our next podcast when we try and figure out what we do after this. Maybe we just unbox just these. Unboxing videos. On the audio. Ah, there's the thingy. The foil. Yep. yep. I'm not going to lie, it's interesting. You might want to wet the cork. That's a good pop. Man, if we were recording Whiskey Foley right now. I know. Well, maybe we can. We can just, yeah, sell this podcast to uh, Whiskey Audio Files. Yeah, see what Mortlock wants for it. Oh, got to get that. The pouring of the scotch into your uh, Stark Industries cup. <laughs> and yes, that's uh, Stark Industries is in Tony Stark, yeah. which is uh, hilarious uh, for this purposes of this show. All right, well, to Thrones of Game. Long may it <laughs> be Still available continued. on the internet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> its reign is over, so all right. Oh, man. Ah, oh, that's good no-no juice. Oh, <laughs> And because, yeah, this has been sitting in my bar mm. for a good, like, oh man, it just keeps warming. I know. Ah. Yeah, this has been sitting in my bar for a good five months now. And just yep. every time I've been like, oh, maybe I can just crack yeah, it a little over. A bit of sneaky. No, it needed to be safe for this moment because yep. I, like, I tried to mm-hmm. source the Game of Thrones scotches because especially I wanted this one again yeah. for this episode. These were hard to track down. Yeah. Like, I was lucky that I just went to some random bottle shop in Dural and that was like the fourth one I'd visited that day. And I'm like, please tell me you got the Game of Thrones Mortlock. And he goes, yeah, I got a whole bunch of them. Uh, do you, like, what do you, and like, they were like massively discounted as well. The guy was <laughs> literally trying to get rid of them. Yeah, that's the thing. They weren't limited because everyone snatched them immediately. They were limited because they were a limited release and took forever to sell through. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like... I think the Johnny Walker Game of Thrones scotches did quite well because they were still of the affordable range. But like when these ones released, like this Mortlock like, was like three hundred and fifty bucks, and like by that time it was a year after the show had ended, and the Game of Thrones brand was in the toilet. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. But and yeah, that said, if you can find it, the Mortlock fifteen-year-old Six Kingdoms, it is smooth and warms, mm. and it's so good. Because yeah, a lot of them were like over a hundred bucks when they first released. When I went to that liquor store, this one was. About 120, Mm -hmm. but all the other ones, like the Lagavulin and the other, like, there's about nine of them. Yeah. Like, they were, you know, around 60 bucks each. So it's just sort of this amazing thing where they are rare now, but they're not, like, valuable. They're not, yeah, they're not sought after, except by us. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Weirdly enough. Yeah. Oh, this is mm, so good. I know, it really is. Just give us a moment out there to appreciate this, this scotch as we appreciate this monumental moment. Well, that was a hell of a scotch opening, but how was the opening of this series, Segway? Oh my god, like, just when I think that this show can't surprise and delight me, Mm -hmm. my god, I was surprised that I was still surprised. Yeah, I mean, for those of you playing at home, this is where they get the wolf pups, where the dragon eggs come from. Bran gets shoved out the window. So just on that, like... Mm I don't know if I forgot this or I was already told because, yeah, at some point the other week I remembered, oh, yeah, Daenerys is Jon Snow's auntie. Yeah. And, like, I'd totally forgotten about that. This one, I don't know if I remember that this is why Jamie pushed Bran out the window. 
Oh, ah, no, no, no. Yeah, he got uh, caught, you know, uh, railing Cersei from behind. Yeah. No, Dothraki that, style. That's entirely why. Dothy style. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> it's going to be whole Joffrey is not, you know, the actual heir to the throne. Mm. And in fact, he's having an incestuous relationship with his sister is enough. Y- yeah. And, uh, yeah, then the things I do for love. Shove. <laughs> so... Uh, was this extra motivation for Bran to be on the run? No, Bran doesn't... Rem- I don't remember if Bran ever remembers why he got shoved out the window. Yeah. At least not until he becomes a three-eyed raven. And then he's too, I can see everything, to really give a shit about his own life anymore. Yeah, right. Um, oh, just quickly on that as well. I am so surprised that there was no Stannis Red Woman... Yeah. In and, all of season one. Yeah. Considering how big players they are in the second season. Yeah. And they, they're only mentioned. Yeah. And I remember in that episode, it's like, we were like, this can't be their introduction. Yeah. It feels too out of nowhere. And it's like only a couple of episodes in before she's giving birth to smoke assassins. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, little context. But also, I think that's kind of what makes this a particularly strong pilot in that... It just dives in. It doesn't yeah. really set up a lot. No, there and there is so much going on. You get introduced to so many characters. I'd forgotten Benjamin Stark was in episode one. Yes. <laughs> because there's just so many people. It's like, okay, there's some guy in black. Later on, we get introduced to 50 dudes in black. So it doesn't really tell us what the hell is going on. Uh, I mean, that kind of covers what just happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but your MVP, what was your most valuable part of this episode? Mortlock. Mortlock. Mm. <sighs> God, what was my most valuable part? Uh, I don't know. Are you chambered? Yeah, I'm always chambered. Yeah, go for Except it. Except like the twice that I haven't been. <laughs> I wanted to give a like a light one to an earlier scene with Ned and Cat at the you know tree with a face and just mm. kind of talking like a married couple that's been together forever, and also a mild one to later on when um they're just in bed after the whole feast kind of thing and again talking about. You know, Robert's going to ask you to be hand to the king and you, I don't want you to go. And he's like, I don't want to go either. But he's my friend. And she's all like, oh, well, I'll, I'll put, I'll hold a knife and be like, listen, fat man, you're not taking my husband. <laughs> and it's just really cute. Yeah, yeah. Like, it really sells them as like an actual couple who care about each other but have this kind of playful relation. It's like the happiest I think we ever see either of them. Mm. Uh, and then that raven arrives with the, no- sorry, then the rider in the night arrives. We have Maester Carl Baron is all like, real sorry to barge in. However, it's important because. Yeah, again, I don't think I ever got his name before. Uh, what was it? Maester Lewin? Yeah, Maester Lewin. Lewin, yeah. Carl Baron. Mm. <laughs> um, Paul yeah. Kelly. Paul Kelly, Carl. Paul Baron. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's that's kind of like the moment where everything starts to move. You yeah. Know? Where it's a moment of, oh, they've. Lysol Aaron thinks John Aaron was actually murdered, and then Ned has to go because he's the only one that uh, Robert Baratheon trusts. And it's just like, this is everything comes down. This whole series happens because of a letter in the night. And I really like going backwards. That's been a moment of, oh, yeah. All like that, that pivotal moment happens, and it's just nice. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting going backwards as well, just how it had to start from such a tight point. Like, with. All told, there's only about two or three story threads going on here, really. Yeah, and we have to also get introduced to everybody and and title cards to just I introduce know. us title to the world. Title cards. It's like this. I wrote that down the second the first one popped up, and it was like you know Winterfell in the north, and it's like, yeah. holy shit, <laughs> we never had title cards at any point ever. Yeah, and I gotta say, like, aside from that, I don't think much has changed. Like from episode structure to the pilot no. to generally what we'd see in the rest of the series yeah clearly it learns a bit but i wouldn't say it changes all that much i feel like some of the music stings are a bit different mm, um, they feel a bit over dramatic in this one yeah and kind of more that they're trying to play on maybe period instruments or something rather than later on they just go orchestral mm. um I, is my kind of feel from it i didn't listen to it too carefully by the way with the arrival of the baratheons and yep. the lannisters yep did you notice, like, the music had, like, this weird mosquito tone in it? Like, a really high-pitched, annoying frequency? Uh, I did not, but uh, maybe that's the yoldy instrument of some kind. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It might the mosquito have been, flute. It might have been something else, like, I don't know, uh, it's something to do with my setup or not something. Not on your I HDD, TV, LED, t- DVD, uh, blee, blee, blah, blah, blue. <laughs> Surely not. W, X, Y, and Z, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I mean... Dusting off this old one, I, I'm just going to give it to Tyrion. Like, everybody sort of gets a little bit in this episode. And, yeah. you know, King Bob has become a recent favourite of mine. You know, yeah. I've only met him recently, to be honest. <laughs> but I guess I've seen a lot of these same beats better 
already, mm. which is kind of a spoiler. Yeah. Like, he does show amazing depth and self-awareness in this one, but so does Tyrion. And yeah, yeah, he just comes blazing into this series. And like, his chat with Jon Snow at the end particularly got me. Yeah, me too. Like, where he's just kind of walks out and he's like, oh, you're Ned's bastard, aren't you? And he kind of sulks away and he's like, sorry I offended you, but it's accurate. And he has a good line of, uh, remember what you are, they'll never let you forget. Mm. Wear it like armor and it will never hurt you. And it's like, yeah, that's a good little bit. And John's like, what do you know about being a bastard? He's like, dude, look at me. Do you not think I get shit on all the time? (laughs) My dad's Charles fucking dance. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I just, uh, it doesn't have to explain, look, they hate me, blah, blah, blah. He's just, and there's a lot of subtlety in this one. I do really like that. There's a moment earlier when, I'm trying to, I can't remember quite when it happens, but there's just a look between John and Arya Mm. and a kind of kinship that's there just because they're both kind of outsiders in the sense that, you know, John's the bastard and she doesn't want to be all ladylike and whatever. And so there's kind of just through nothing but a shot reaction shot, this kind of, you get a sense that they are a little bit closer than we ever really see. Yeah. I also appreciated with Aya as well, like when they were doing like the cross stitching thing and she was mm-hmm. just like distant. They didn't ima- just have her like throw off it. And, I don't want to do this. I want to be a soldier and then like explicitly explain it. It's yeah. just, it's told with that fucking arrow out of nowhere. And then Aya, and then yeah. she gets to have a cheeky run around with Bran and oh God, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Doesn't get to run around for long. Uh, but yeah, she's just sitting there doing cross stitch, looking a bit bored and hearing the sounds of like arrows whizzing by. And it's yeah. like, you couldn't hear that from there, but I, it's it makes the point without having her throw down the needle and thread and be like, well, I think a girl should be able to do whatever she likes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, without completely lampshading it. The only needle I want is the sword that I'm going to get in the future that I'm going to call needle. Stick it with the pointy end. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it's so much fun seeing the Stark kids all together. <laughs> I know. This is why it was this, heartbreaking to see them seri- split for so long. Like... They essentially break them up in the second episode. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Mm. And yeah, it's all just disaster from there on out. Mm. Oh, but also an MVP, most valuable puppies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were so cute. They were mm. some very cute puppies. And uh, yeah. yeah just, <laughs> just adorable wolf that. puppies. Well, there's also seeped in symbolism because we see a wolf, mm. the symbol of House Stark, having uh, killed and be killed by a stag, the symbol of House House Baratheon. Uh, hmm, wonder if that's foreshadowing anything. Mm. But there's even, and then there's just the world building of, ah, oh, it's weird to see a direwolf this far south of the nor- wall. They're usually up way north, north. And it's like, aha, yeah. aha. So wait, what killed the stag? The wolf. And the stag killed the wolf. Yeah. Uh, they got each other killed. There we go. Yes. Yep. Well, that's the moral of the series, mutually assured destruction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, though I do like the they're looking at this dead stag, and I think it's um, Rob Stark goes, oh, what did it? Could it have been a mountain lion? And I wanted somebody to go, mountain lion in this climate? <laughs> mountain lions are in temperate zones. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, I don't know much about anything, but I don't think there are mountain lions in England. And I know this isn't England, but it's England. Let's check the Republic sometimes. Like, I'm pretty sure this was filmed in, like, North Scotland, because I'm mm. pretty sure I can see some thistle bushes about. Yeah, yeah, and the particular <laughs> fog ro- rolling over the hills in there yeah. very very scotland lots of wide green hills up there very lovely country hmm. uh, which is where scotch comes from <laughs> someone should write songs about it <laughs> uh this is also the one that starts with the cold open with a bunch of guys going north of the wall sorry just thinking about that like is it like a champagne sort of thing where scotch mm. has to come from the scotch region of scotland yeah no uh, scotch has to come from scotland anywhere else in the world it's whiskey without an e Oh. I think. I might have that back. What does that say on the front? Does it say whiskey with an E-Y or whiskey with a just a Y? Sans E. No E. Sans E, yeah. So the rest of the world added the E to go. differentiate it. You know, And same with um, bourbon. It has to come from bourbon, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, uh, but anywhere else in the world, it's whiskey. And port's gone through a recent thing like that? you got to call it tawny now? Yeah, yeah. It confused a lot of old people. <laughs> oh, poor old people. Yeah, because they're like, why? They just wanted... It's like, no. There's a hundred genders now. I can't call my booze the thing I used to call it. What's going on? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, th- it's they, them, and it's a tawny now. <laughs> <laughs> the tawny... The, the port is they, them now. <laughs> Anywho. Yep, sorry. A little Good. distracted there. Oh, just appreciating the bottle here. Uh, it is, it's also just a very lovely print. Oh, yeah. And the color of this is gorgeous. Like a dark gold. It's beautiful. Mm. No, and the paper's got this lovely texture and the embossed mm. gold on it. And it's, it's just, yeah. Seriously, fucking well done, Mortlock. Yeah. Well, as long as we're taking a break. Yep. <sighs> a little dip a Kit Kat in that. 
What? You sort of have a break, have a Kit Kat uh, in your Mortlock. I thought you were going to be like Tim Tam Slam, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but with scotch. I mean, this is lovely scotch, but I think, yeah, Scotland as a whole would have a heart attack if I tried to do a Tim Tam Slam with it. <laughs> uh, I mean, meeting of worlds. <laughs> And new. <laughs> yeah. This one whole starts with a whole cold open of a bunch of rangers going north of the wall and one of them finding like a bunch of disembodied people in a sigil and then mm. runs back to tell the others and then they go back and it's gone. And uh, I mean, on the original watch of this, I imagine that would, would have been very tense and scary because we don't know what these things are yet, but we know what these things are now. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, my favorite thing to do in any haunted house movie is to imagine the ghost, like, planning it. Like, okay, what I'm going to do, she's going to walk in, and when she turns around, I'm going to stack all the furniture up. When she turns around, she's going to be, oh my god, wait, all that furniture It's going to blow my mind. Yeah. Because it immediately takes all the fear away from it. Like, what was the plan for the ghost at this point? And what are the plan of the White Walkers? We're going to build this sigil, right? It's going to have, like, a circle with a line down the middle of it. Out of, like, body parts. Yeah. This one guy will, guy will see it. He'll turn around. He'll see this dead girl we haven't changed yet. And then he'll run away. So then I want everyone to scoop up the bits of body and hide them. And then he'll come <laughs> back and like, oh, where is it? And oh, it'll, trust me, guys, it'll blow their minds. Oh, they're coming places, people. <laughs> exactly. It's like, what Says would, one white walker tapping their clipboard. <laughs> like, it would have been one thing if they weren't dismembered bodies. They were just dead bodies in a pattern. Because then the implication is they've been resurrected. Yeah. But they're, like, pieces of a body, of many bodies. So... Who went back, scooped it all up, and hit it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what we, that's nothing like the rest of the White Walkers we see. Especially, yeah, they tend to jump right on it. If mm. they can, you know, get another one for their own, they're not fucking around. They yeah. just touch, now a White Walker. Yeah, but then we do see that, you know, kid that was dead come back and has the blue eyes that are glowing a little bit. Yep, my note there is spooky child is spooky. Yeah, turn around, <laughs> bright eyes. Yeah, that sort of reminds me of, like, it's one of my favourite bits from Scary Movie, but, like, it's a funny thing, mm. but it doesn't actually work in practice. It's when their, like, ghost face is, like, hiding behind a tree, and then he appears, and mm. then the girl sitting in the classroom sees him, and then turns away, and then he goes, uh, uh, and then, like, goes and hides, and she looks back, and he's gone, and she's like, <gasps> oh, no! Yeah. Like, the scene... It's too clunky to actually, like, but if you know the trope, it's really funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, just had to get that off my chest for some reason. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm the same way. When you disassemble what the villain is doing at these moments, it becomes yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, but there's a bit where he reports back to the other rangers, like, and they're like, well, how close did you get? He's like, oh, as close as any man would. And I kind of like that as an excuse for anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, I can't think, I just dropped my pen, and I can't think of an example. It's all gone wrong. <laughs> Why are you late today? I got as close as any man could. Yeah, exactly. What does that mean? <laughs> How close would any man get? That's not a unit of measure. <laughs> oh, yeah, I went down south during the holidays. Oh, did you see your auntie? Oh, I got as, as close, close as, as man any man could. would. Yep, I was at far. Oh, it's about three as close as any man would. <laughs> yeah. You know, what, what the fuck is that? Anyway. Um, um, questionnaire? Oh, yeah, that thing that I used <laughs> to structure this. Wait, hang on, this is one last time. <clears throat> Don't have to <laughs> Enjoy flex it. into it. And for our next question, nudity! we got a bit of tip. We get a fully nude Roz, who again, first episode, mm. and I do like the kind of intellectual tennis of like, Tyrion thinks she's accidentally insulting him by being like, oh, I, heard, I didn't know the queen had another brother. And he's like, oh, well, she does. But then Roz kind of letting on, I know it's you, because yeah. how many dwarves are there? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good little back and forth, and I do enjoy it. And yes, she, she's quite naked during it. So. Indeed. And I was told that this was Amelia Clark's only nude scene. I don't know what that means of power boobs later on in the series, but... Wait, her only nude scene? Apparently, like, because apparently after the series got picked up, she stated in her contract after this scene that I she mean, wouldn't do any more nudity. After this season, though. Or... We've, just, we've definitely seen her naked in other seasons. She's naked in the last episode of this season where she gets out of the fire. Well, she's topless, at least. I don't know how much... Remember the, there's well, one... The, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what it means for that episode, but yeah, yeah when I was researching Facts of Game of yep. Thrones the other <laughs> week, yeah, that was one thing that I found out in that is that, yeah, after this pilot, she said no more nudity. And when she, like, burns down the Dothraki hut with all the leaders in it, she walks out naked Terminator T-1000 style. Yeah, that's the so, one I don't know what of. Yeah, I don't think this woman knows what nudity means. Mm. Maybe you're right. Maybe it was after the first season. Or maybe it's, you know, top only. I don't know what it is. but mm. um, Yeah, because there was a particularly egregious shot. Uh, when... yeah, there's one where, yeah. Um, so there's a whole very 
intense scene where this what's his actual name? Vasilis, her brother. Dumb and brother. Loki less, yeah. Yeah. Dumb and brother, nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, where he's just stripped her down, like inspecting her and kind of like and be like, <laughs> is this an incest? I don't remember. You have you have the body of a woman now, just sort of flicking her tit a bit. Just yeah, to... it's like, Look at that. That's a woman's tit. You could bounce a gold coin off that. <laughs> yeah, but then when he walks away, the camera like the idea is it's panning down to follow him. Yeah. But he's walking away, so you just pan down to see more of Dan Brady's butt. Yeah, like, we only see the top of the crack, and then there's the W at the bottom. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> come on, guys, that's a pretty gratuitous shot. But yeah. I, get, I guess, and she doesn't have any braids. This yes. is the important thing to note. Her hair is only a little bit wavy. Look, I know the canonical thing is when she wins a victory, she gets another braid. But here, at our theory of power braids, she's powerless and braidless. Mm-hmm. Well, so, I mean, fuck, she is. Like, yeah. Yep. So there we go. I I would say confirmed. Mm. And uh, editing me, I don't know what a confirmed sound is, but like a. <laughs> you know. I was right. Yep. So yeah, Loki is just weird in this one and a total dick. And considering how quickly he loses his power, it's weird to think he has any at all because he's mostly just here. He does have yeah. like, and it's, he's kind of crazy, and he's actually kind of really interesting. So, well, you know, it's good to see bad characters die. It he's not a bad character in the <laughs> damn <Yeah>. words. <laughs> he's not a bad character in the sense that he's uninteresting. He's bad as in you know a dick. Yeah. No, it's very interesting this season how. So much of it is feels self-contained within the first series, like yeah. se- season rather. Yeah, the characters and stuff like it feels like from season to season stay way more consistent later on. Yeah, mm. like the cast is so different here. Yeah, true. I mean, I guess they're still figuring it out, but yeah. Uh, that said, I, but yeah, in the first ep, sorry, uh, in the first episode where we still haven't like met a lot of the big players who would be big players and Eleven Eight Club later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we still get two characters named Rob. Like, it's <laughs> fucking insane. Just a mess with you. Um, but yeah, Loculus has the very intimidating line of, oh, you don't want to unleash the dragon, do you? Kind of implying mm. that you don't want to piss me off because like there's maybe been a history of violence between them when he when she does. Like make him angry, and it's like, oh, that says a lot without saying a lot. But then later on, we've got the he's no dragon; his head's melted into gold now. Ha ha. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's interesting. Still interesting, yeah. How quickly they offed him, and like how fast Daenerys' story moves to her becoming, you know, the one woman army, mm. and then just remains that for the entire yeah. series. Like, I'll, I'll sh- until she goes crazy. Yeah, I'll shout it forever. They should have kept her more ambiguous in terms. They make her too much of a hero too quickly. And yeah. it's boring. No, because I was, you know, I was reading a bit as well with that, because uh, Amelia Clark said something to the tune of, like, she was asked what would she change about the series. Um, uh, the what would you change question. Yeah, exactly. And, like, she said some flippant joke about, oh, I wouldn't die at the end. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> but because the article was also mentioning, like, the huge backlash to the bells and, like, mm. how Daenerys acted. And I'm like, I don't know. I do think that was there the whole time, but they didn't actually lean into it hard No, they didn't build to it properly. They just dashed towards it. I do think that was the plan all along to have her go homicidal at the end, but they just, they steered too far away from it and then was too rushed to course correct and get it back to where it made sense and so it just felt out of nowhere. Yeah, it does like, I know the source material of the books is what they're always going to go on, but it does Mm. make me wonder if there was like a bit of network meddling there and Mm. like, like, okay, people have responded to Daenerys, they really like her. And so we're just not going to lean into those grey elements so much. Like, perhaps. Maybe. Because we've seen that with other shows like Dexter, where it's just like, that dude just got should have gotten sent to prison already. Just yeah. like have the balls to have a fucking Dexter's in prison series. Like, yep, I've got so many gripes about that show. <laughs> oh, it's fair. No, there's plenty to be had about this show. Yeah, um, yeah. Just... But yeah, stay tuned for our backwards watch of Dexter. That's going to be uh, Rex dead or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Ret Z. Z. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, also on nudity. We have a bit of nudity during the uh, Dothraki wedding. And mm. I kind of like that as a contrast of, you know, she's there in a very fine silk dress kind of thing. And there's just fucking and fighting going on around. <laughs> yep. And just while well, people just bring nice presents. And it's it's a good contrast. and kind of really shows how out of place both she and uh, Loki Lys are. Yep. Guys fighting and taking it turns to go Dothy style on yep. the in front of everybody mm-hmm. and then you get into a fight and there's guts spilling out everywhere yep 
and then cuts off his braid. It's like, dude, you already cut out his intestines. Yeah. <laughs> Do you really? I think because they're all like, oh, the Dothraki, when they lose a fight, they have their braid cut off. And it's like, cool. That guy's dead. <laughs> no one's going to see him without a braid except dead. I think they will understand he lost a battle. <laughs> Fucking Dothraki. I know, they don't even have a word for expressing appreciation for a thing you have done. I know. <laughs> that's that's weird. Like the Dothraki have no word for thank you, Khaleesi. And it's like. Really? Well, no. how the fuck did their culture work? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you mean like they have no literal translation for thank you, but they do have like a cheers, brah? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is no the only word you know? No. Ah, uh, fuck, that doesn't answer anything. No. <laughs> no. I do also kind of find that interesting in an intimidating sort of way in the sense of, oh, he's heard people shout no at him before. While he's been killing them, that's why it's the only word he knows. Oh, God. Is what I'm taking from it. Um, yeah. God. Yeah, but no, no, oh no. Slab. Mm. That's my guess. But again, it's, it's subtextual. I, I created that, not something that was told me, but that's what I pulled from it. Mm. Any other nudity? Oh, uh, I think, yeah, that was it. Just, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So just in that bath scene where Daenerys gets into the bathtub and her handmaid's like, it's too hot, my lady. Yeah. But also, which, okay, is the, the um, forward shadowing. No, back. <laughs> I for, I've forgotten which one. I've said back shadow so many times. Yep. I've forgotten the foreshadowing is what I'm supposed to be. <laughs> it's the foreshadowing that she can't be burned. But I also like that this lady just runs in, says that line, and then just seems to peace out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, no, my lady, it's too hot. Ser- seriously. So should I, do you want me to help? Oh God, are you okay? You, you're okay? No. Um, I'm surprised. I guess it's because you're trying to be emotionally distant and therefore physically distant from this whole thing. I bet it doesn't mean anything else. Bye. Bye. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just wanted her to be like, I'm having a moment to yeah. myself where I'm thinking about the future. Oh my, you've ruined it. You've ruined it. <laughs> uh, just kind of funny to have, because obviously they had to establish, oh, it's hot and oh, she isn't getting hurt. And on the forward watcher, I remember thinking, oh, she doesn't care so much that she's kind yeah. of mildly suicidal or something. But then later on you learn, no, she's fireproof. Yeah, which, you know, I'm not going to rush into it immediately, but I do think at some point I am going to actually sit down and watch this series again in forwards and, Mm -hmm. like, sort of try and catch up on a lot of these things because I'm really surprised, actually, how much I forgot, like... Oh, me too, man. ...over the course of this whole experiment. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's all my nude notes. Yep, no, then we must move to our next question. Oh, but uh, but uh, Jamie sending in three more ladies of the day. Oh, yeah, that's (laughs) that's true. (laughs) So yeah, just fucking close the door. <laughs> I do like that line of, I'm surprised someone has to explain to you the meaning of a closed door in a brothel. Mm. <laughs> and then, yeah, the backup when he sends, he's like, oh, I'm going to go through all the women here. And he's like, yeah, we don't have time. I'm just sending them all in at once. And yeah. Then just, <laughs> when he's leaving the line of, close the door. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, we get Hodor in this establishing episode. I know, episode, he was in he... the background. It's like, yeah. okay, nice, nice. Just hanging out there. Yep. Just being... Friend of the show, Christian Nan. Yep. One of only two cameos on this entire... That's... Mm. Friend of the show, Paul Goodman. Hi. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Anywho. So, let's move on to our next question. Violence. Yes, for uh, the last time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that whole beginning with the dismembered corpses and one white walker just takes a dude's head. and mm. It's pretty full on. It is also then weird. These guys are not terribly far north of the wall to begin with. Yeah. I get this is meant to be a white walker scouting party or something. We never quite find out what they're there for. But they're so close. And then it takes like six seasons, no, seven more seasons for them to actually show up. Uh, well, this is when the White Walkers were under control by the overdramatic king mm. who <laughs> had all these elaborate setups and plans. And they were just like, guys, we, we got to hurry this up. We're in season six now. And we haven't actually been oh, around. So you're saying before the Night King, there was the drama king. Yes. <laughs> who was just like, no, no, it's all about intimidation. We kind of sneak up on them, put weird omens around. And then after a while, it's like, dude, this is taking too long uh we voted you are out yeah (laughs) and we've had so much of your talking and discussions that we are implementing a no talking rule (laughs) it all makes simple possess move possess yeah we're white walkers okay (laughs) not white planners not white dramatists okay we walk it's what we do we don't run (laughs) no we're not in a hurry or anything but we're now in a hurry it's season six guys yeah come on speed it up (laughs) Yep. But yeah, besides the uh, fucking fighting party, was there any other violence? Yeah, there's a violence where we see that one guy who somehow got away from the White Walkers head north of the wall, oh, and he's and the then one not head at all. Yeah, uh, when uh, and then has a good line there of you know, <coughs> the man who passes sentence is the one who should swing the sword, which I quite like. Mm. It's a good little bit. And then, would you like more? I would like. Slock. 
Oop. Yeah, that guy's <laughs> uh, basically run this far south and gets captured by the mm. uh, Man of the Night's Watch, which is why, then weird that it's Ned who has to execute him or pass sentence, but I guess they needed a lord to officially say, you've broken your vows, we're going to off you. Yeah, but like, no trial, no jury, just full executioner. Yeah, well, that's the thing, and a weird that kind of collides with the thing later, because I guess the sole implication is this guy was running south and he's not supposed to leave the wall at all. But later on, Benjamin shows up and it's like you can get breaks from the wall when you want it. Like, I thought no one could leave. I thought that was the point. Like maybe you could go to Molestown or something where they say, oh, they lay with horrors down there or what? something. But it's like, I thought you couldn't just peace out for a weekend and mm. come back just because your family's having a feast or whatever. Well, judging by Benjamin's eyebrows and beard, I think he moonlights as a magician so i think that's how he's gotten away with it it's fair uh, i mean i do maintain he looks like a melted adam driver uh, <laughs> so make Which, it you know, if, you will. You if you don't have adam driver looks you know at least you can make it as a magician in this town <laughs> fair yeah Quite, and given all the deus ex magic he pulls out of his ass later <laughs> yeah for real then uh seems like a fitting profession for him yeah hold on a second ah scotch mm. Just, it's such a pleasant warm. It's like getting hugged from inside. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like, there's tiny little Scottish men just, like, <laughs> giving me, me me organs a warm embrace. <laughs> yep, and it's, like, full and powerful, but without being, like, sharp and... <clears throat> mm, it's mm. good, good stuff. Yeah. They're just, like, <laughs> draping various lambskins over my... <laughs> Oh, you'd be right. And fuck it. I, I, can't, hey, I can't, can't, can't do a Scottish accent. It's not too far from your native tongue. Ah, uh, it's, um... Yeah, I know. And, like, all Scotland, Ireland, England, and fucking Wales can fit inside Australia. And yet they have such wildly oh, different yeah. accents. Absolutely. Whereas, yeah, you go from here to Perth and those are roughly the same. <laughs> yeah, this is a Perth accent. This is a New South Wales accent. <laughs> <laughs> the only it, difference is what we call swimsuits and the sizes of beer. Oh, and a chicken palm. Oh, oh, that's right. Palm changes, doesn't it? Yeah, palm or palmer. Hmm. Mm. Crazy world. Be like, uh, hang on. I had a scotch thing I was going to be. It's like, oh, we got the finest sheep's pelts and we're going to deck your mouth with it. It'll be plenty warm, laddie. <laughs> I'll buy that whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like covering your mouth in sheep. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, so yeah, then Ned just offs this dude's head. And uh, yeah, that's. I do like the bit where he's like, Bran needs to come see an execution. He's old enough. Mm. And John's like, don't look away. And then Bran doesn't. And then. Yeah. And then they're walking up and explaining why this had to happen. And it's like, yeah. And uh, old Bran has the fair line of uh, our way is the old way. And it's like, I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. Mm. Yep. And yeah, he even says to Catelyn, who's like, oh, I shouldn't see the winter is coming. It's like, you guys behead lots of people in winter? What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Got to keep warm with blood. (laughs) No, I think it just means things get harsh and hectic. Yeah, I suppose. You know, people might steal from each other and you have to hand out that tough law and, you know... Better to learn it when it's sunny. I don't know. But uh, Fair enough. it sounds good coming out of scene, Bean. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so it's all good. Uh, we see the stupid eye stones for John Aaron. Ah, oh, love it. And the fact that's in episode one chuffs me quite well. <laughs> yeah, like the title cards. I just think it was one thing I should have gone, can we abandon this? <laughs> I know it's in the book, but uh, it's a bit, it's a wee bit stupid. <laughs> Did we already do this? How did George R. R. Martin describe this in the book? And the, in the funeral, the guy laying on the deathbed is just wearing the most stupidest stones on his face. Yes, we attach googly eyes to the dead to remind us that life is, while tragic, not without its silliness. But Look at you, his eyes, Google. <laughs> when you think about it, death is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, get it? He died. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's, it's just fun that it's here at the beginning. Uh, then we see a raven with like a no tie on its leg, and I wrote down raven calling like Avon, but that doesn't work because not a lot of people know Avon calling is a thing. Oh yeah, I remember but the fact those. that we actually see it, it kind of is what I'm interested. In. We very we, we always hear a raven flew in, but we very rarely yeah. see ravens with letters attached to them showing up. Also, I'm really glad with the direwolf thing that they were through their ages able to show the passage of time with this show. Yeah, I like that as a, a quick little detail of they start they're very young cubs, but then because it would take months like they even say we've been writing for a month when yeah. the uh when baratheons show off the pups are a little bit bigger and it's enough to say yeah and then later on they're almost they're about halfway juvenile yeah and then and then they're full grown 
So because yeah, we had that complaint about the episode where just the post seemed to be working fucking phenomenally in that one episode. Mm. This one sort of at least gave it a bit of context that it felt a bit more real, like the yeah. speed of the messages traveling. Oh yeah. Uh, they're not flying supersonic yet. Yeah. <laughs> but they get there eventually. No, oh, that's it. The Ravens collect all eight Chaos Emeralds, and that's how yeah. they were able to move so quick. You know, I missed a note of nudity because I didn't write oh. down the end. It is shirtless boys shaving. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this was an odd scene. It was. It was just kind of out of nowhere where we've got Rob Stark, Theon. Jon Snow, and Theon who are all shirtless getting shaved in their haircut. And it's like, I, why are they just hanging out shirtless? It's cold. Yeah. <laughs> we know it's cold. The, and this barber just like continually like grabbing them very aggressively and just like slapping them at every available opportunity. <laughs> like, is this what they had instead of aftershave back then? Just a it's good just, hard hit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where uh, Macaulay Culkin got it from. Ah, oh. <laughs> just slap your face real hard. There you go. I cut the hair of men. Nah, I'm not a tailor. I'm a barber. That's it. Your hair's shorter now. Fuck off. Before he watched that uh, Keep the Change You Filthy Animal movie, he watched the pilot of Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, somehow. <laughs> Hidden detail in Home Alone. Well, I mean, it, the first book came out in like the 80s. So yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's been going on for a long time. And fucking George still hasn't finished hasn't, it yet. Yeah, hasn't released a single book since the show started. Wow. I mean, I know that it takes a long time, but good Lord. Yeah, I um, mean, words are hard. Yeah, hang on, I'm going to look out where the first book came out. Just a second. Oh, I can do the vocal drop for this one. Oh, nice. One Google search later. <laughs> hey, nice. <laughs> I did enjoy doing that. <laughs> uh, 1996 it came out, so my apologies. Still. It was not the 80s. That was book one, though. Yeah, and what year did this episode come out? Like 2008, 2009 or something? Uh, Yeah, something like that. One Google search later. 2011. <laughs> 2011. Jesus Christ. Yep. There's four out of six books done, I think. I don't know. Uh, we're They're not here not for book. We're not here for books. <laughs> Where we're going to read The Song of Ice and Fire backwards. Good Lord. They are thick as well. So. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, we get a bit of Assassin's Creed Winterfell with uh, all, Brand? Bra- all Brand Stark just climbing a whole bunch. <laughs> It's just, I feel like they're laying it on so thick as well. Now, promise me no more climbing. He promised you, and then he's like, I promise. Like, you know, you always look down before you lie. Yeah. It's a bit like, lady, if you'd been like, you look down before you lie. Don't lie to me. Promise me no more climbing. Okay. And from that point on, Brandon Stark never climbed again and was never pushed out a window. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get to become the Lord of the Game of the Thrones. Well, I mean, Wait. to be fair, <laughs> the, if that didn't happen, Ned still dies anyway. Yeah, so. true. Yeah, but then maybe some other stuff happens different. Mm. Um, yeah, and there was a whole fan theory about Bran psychically sending himself back to possess Jaime Lannister in that moment, but it's like that's, that never made sense to me. It was always stupid. Nah. Because he knew if being disabled meant he would become the three-eyed raven, blah, blah, blah. I never bought that, but yeah. Yeah, I think through it all, Bran has always had difficulty accepting who he is. Even at the end, he was like, I really don't want to be king, you guys. And it's like, no, Bran the Broken. <laughs> no, no, he was all like, that's why I came here. Or why did you think I came? Oh, really? I yeah. thought he didn't want it. Was it was John, I don't want it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but Bran was all like... Oh, no, sorry. It was Tyrion who didn't want to be the Hand. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Yep. I mean, that was a long time ago. We've had a lot of shows since then. Oh, that's interesting that in the end, it was a Stark and fucking Lannister union that held the throne in the end. Wow. How about that? Because hey, King, King Bran Stark and then Tyrion's his Hand. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's on the small camera. There we go. Well, everyone just loves Tyrion. Like you were saying, sh- producer show notes, I'm sure they're like, hey, everyone super likes Tyrion. Don't kill him. Yeah. <laughs> please go, Martin. Please, 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 please. Oh, well, it's going to take me another five years to write this book now. Good, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was a great bit where Rob Baratheon first shows up and then sits, looks at Ned. He's like, you got fat. Yeah. <laughs> and Ned just gives him a look and it's like, nice. Classic, and, you son of a bitch sort of I uh, do always reunion. love the, the like, usually it's a post-apocalypse thing where, you know, they two friends meet after years and one of them, they pretend yeah. to be enemies for like 10 seconds. They're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just want to say it now. Uh, if there's some kind of apocalypse and we get separated for like 15 years and then, you know, one of us bumps into the other, let's <laughs> pretend to hate each other for like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Before someone <laughs> like, delivers a line. Yeah. Well, you've got a lot of nerve showing up here, Elliot J. O'Neill. Ah. Uh, I thought I'd never see your face again. That is, I hoped. Ah. <laughs> Come here, you old bastard. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, plan for that. But that said, there's a little kind of cute bit where Rob Baratheon finds uh, Albrand. He's like, ah, oh, go on, show us your muscles. And he's all flexed. Yeah. He's like, ah, oh, that's adorable. 
Yeah, it's a weird fucking little walking down the line thing. It's just, yeah, Pat's the one that looks like Tommen on the head. Uh, uh, Rick on, yeah. Yeah, goes to Sansa, you're pretty. <laughs> and what does he even say to Arya? Just but, what's your name? But I mean, that kind of implication being it's been nine years since he's seen Ned and Maisie was cast at, what, 12? So she, yeah. she might maybe is supposed to be about nine. So the idea being that he's never met her. Yeah, true. Okay, Just, yeah. And that's kind of... I took that as a bit like a mark of the amount of time they haven't seen each other. Sure. Okay, um, yeah. But I do quite like that there's a classic, um, where is Tyrion? And then brothel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I do like that. That's that's on 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 character of him. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to run through some notes. Cause yeah, that's... like, I, honestly, I'm looking through mine and I'm like... There's a... Terrible line from, uh, you know, Loculus. But again, he delivers it all sweetly. He's like, I would let all 40,000 Dothraki men fuck you and their horses to get what I want. Mm. But I'll, like gently brushing back her hair. And it's like, well done on being creepy, dude. Yeah. Is it true they fuck their horses? I wouldn't ask. <laughs> I'm not going to ask him, obviously. Uh, but he's I, such a petulant cunt. <laughs> I know, but I do like the guy's reply of like, oh, well, forgive me, my lord. I took you for a king who, and kings most often mm. blunder their ways into stupid sentences and kind of buttering him up to get him get himself out of it. But I also do. kind of a dig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I quite like it. Um, Sansa's like, oh my God, Joffrey is so hot. <laughs> that was another surprise. He didn't have a line in this episode. That's true. It's all just looking at stuff. Imagine that audition. Okay, can you look what, what, like this? Oh, yes, that's good. Yeah, and so all the shit with the wolves is like essentially our introduction to him and then yeah. it's just full-on bastard from there. Like yeah. I thought there'd be a bit more build-up of him like faking it with Sansa a bit, but yeah. No, we go from, yeah, wolves to bastard real quick. So, <laughs> uh, man, yeah. that's pretty crazy. Oh, yeah, and speaking of Sansa, they're just at a wedding feast and Cecil Lannis is all like, oh, have you bled yet? Like, Bitch, <laughs> we are at dinner. I know this is like secret women's bit, but come on, some decorum, please. Yeah. But I mean, to be fair, yeah, Bob Baratheon is just oh, groping a woman f- right on flagrantly the- kissing another woman in front of his wife. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought he was at least somewhat subtle in that he'd be banging whores while he had his wife's brother stand guard. Yeah. I mean, subtle. if you want to call that, it's a degree of subtlety. <laughs> yeah. Which again, is what I like about his honesty as a character is just like, I want you to be my hand as I, you know, eat and drink and fuck and whore around away my way to an early death. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh my God, guy knows what he wants. I'm envious. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, and he's going for it. Good for you. That's what you do when you can. You, yeah. you get what you want, I guess. Uh, Arya has a bit of a food fight and flicks food at Sansa. That, that was so delightful. fucking funny. <laughs> and I do like Rob Stark is just laughing at it. And then Catelyn's like, Mm-mm. and Rob's like, oh, time for bed, Arya. <laughs> yeah, smash cut to bed. <laughs> yeah. There's a quick little line between Tyrion and the Hound where oh, yeah. uh, the Hounds are like, oh, you a good hunter. And Tyrion's like, yes, my spear never misses. He's like, it's not hunting if you pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, nice. A T- lot more of his hair is missing in this scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we get a bit of uh, Ned Stark, a tad shirtless, like an open V-neck. He's got a bunch of scars. Mm. It's just a neat detail. You know, it says he's been in wars. He's fought. Yeah. Without, without overdoing it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's my other note. Fucking Cloud Stark. What the goddamn is with the size of that fucking sword? That can't be practical even for beheadings. Yeah. Um, my only guess is it is very practical for beheadings because it's big and you just make one big swing and it's heavy enough to get through bone because right. historically getting through a neck bone is very difficult. Yeah, um, I actually heard that's one of the things with the guillotines. Yeah. That, like, it was meant to be clean and quick as, yeah. as much as a beheading could be because more often than not, it would take a few good swings to get through someone's neck. Yeah. I mean, we saw that as well in another episode that I, th- I think it was Theon as well that like did the beheading and like oh, yeah, didn't yeah. do it good the first Botched time. Botched it entirely and had yeah. to like take a few good whacks and then kick the head off. Yeah. Yeah. Man, even he's is still a prick in this episode. Haha, <laughs> you got the shit dog, Jon Snow. Uh-huh, way to suck, Jon. And even to Rob is like, I take orders from your father, not from you. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, he gets developed incredibly quickly as well. Yeah. So, no, yeah. I'm surprised. Like, yeah, Theon was one of, uh, um, along with Jorah, he was, they were my surprises for the 11-8 club. Like, mm. they seem so much more important in these early seasons than in the later ones. They felt like such bit players then. Yep. Um, my only other note is, like, this was a really good scene between um, Robert and um, Ned in the crypt, where they're looking over the mm. grave of, yeah, the former wife and the former sister. Liana, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and here's the whole thing of, ah, oh, she shouldn't be in a terrible place like this. She'd be somewhere where the sun can touch her, stand over her, and all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah, it tell, again, says a lot without saying much. And then Ned's got that she's my sister and she belongs down here with her family. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice stuff. No, um, yeah, really wonderful. And yeah, really humanizes him as well because he's sort of not shown to be super great. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's out there, you know kissing random ladies and saying, ah, I just want you to run my country while I drink and eat and whore. And yeah. 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 But I mean, that's it. He, he's, he's just stating it. He knows what he wants and he's going for it. He's not a direct yeah. dick to anyone. You know, actually, one of my theories going into the pilot is that this would be the only episode where we would see the Mad King mm. and that we'd see Robert Baratheon be chosen to be king and um, like... Uh, like all that setup. Yeah, because I, I don't know. In my head, I put that John Aaron was the Mad King's hand. Ah, right. And so this was a whole big transference of power. No, no, that happened decades earlier. Yeah. Hence everyone got fat. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Anyway, that was just one of my theories. <laughs> yeah, no, fair. I mean, it would have been interesting, this reverse build-up of what are we going to see at the very beginning. Yeah, especially because the Mad King is referenced so heavily. I was... Yeah. Just hoping to see that daffy motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, me too, but maybe we get it in the, one of the prequel series that's apparently coming out, allegedly. Yay! I know. <laughs> Will we cover them? Uh, probs not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that puts me out of notes. How about you? I mean, you have put your notebook away. So. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I've got, yeah, I'm out of notes. Well, if I'm out of notes and you're out of notes, we must ask our final question ever. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> I'll fill that tiny bit. Uh, we are going to do like an extra bonus episode, a kind of like episode zero, where we're just going to, uh, we're talking about watching the South Park when they covered, did a bit of a Game of Thrones riff and maybe just talk about a, you know, uh, end of series cap. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, you can catch us on the usual channels on uh, the Simpsons Index and Pulp Fury Radio, and you can check us out on uh, S- patreon.com slash sidequest studios. That's <laughs> patreon.com slash sidequest studios. Do you have to say that in like an announcer voice to. I really, it's, that's how it's loaded in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I have to fall back to it. Yeah. You have to pull it out of the uh, announcer voice holster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's just how it goes there. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I, any final thoughts? It's yeah. so weird to be here. I know, right? It's just without uh, another episode to fucking title riff on. Yeah. No, uh, this was a very interesting experiment. Like, yeah. I am surprised, actually, uh, with the show that um, there was actually a lot less nudity than I thought there I would be. I was the same way. I, I remember <laughs> this just being tits akimbo. When sure there's, like, some. Especially with the South Park one, like, I was expecting a lot more flaccid cocks around the place. Yeah. And also, like, in one time where I did catch an episode, I did see someone's hog and... And so I sort of had this impression of it the whole time. Yeah. Like, it's actually, I am surprised with how little detail there was in this one, and mm-hmm. I'm also surprised that it kind of caught fire as well. Like, yeah, um, this is like at this stage, this just feels like high concept fantasy, and I think this was the trendsetter that a lot yeah. of because we're seeing this. You know, what was it, 2011? This premiered. There was nothing else like this at the time, I suppose. Well, at least not in fantasy. There were other HBO shows that were this kind of dark, gritty realism thing, your, your Deadwood and stuff like mm. that. But there was nothing else in fantasy that was like this, and this is what really got people's attention. And it tits akimbo. Yeah. Um, and it is at this age of, you know, the golden age of uh, television where, you know, Breaking Bad and fucking Sopranos were sort of uh, setting the trends for what hour-long dramas could be. Mm. And this certainly feels like it carved out a niche. But yeah, it's just sort of surprising that it was a hit and like a hit with people that you wouldn't normally think oh, you're definitely a fantasy fan. Yeah, I definitely grew. And I think not being a fantasy fan is what helped because a lot of it is grounded in especially later when they go to King's Landing and it's so deep in politics and Mm. this kind of court culture of, you know, honor and duty and also just sneaking around. Yeah, I think the fact that it wasn't heavy fantasy is what really helped sell it to a lot of people. Yeah. No, definitely. And, like, all the characters are great and well-realized. Yeah, I I think this... I made the right move by not jumping on board (laughs) with the show and so I could watch uh, watch backwards because, like, I don't know uh, how many other shows this would work for. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, we've workshopped the idea of, okay, what can we do next that's backwards? Um, But we've already both seen Breaking Bad and it doesn't... 
it needs this kind of long drawn storyline so you can't do any kind of episodic show no and uh, that's the other benefit that you'd only seen it once whereas breaking bad i have watched like yeah. seven times through <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so we've discussed that but i don't know the idea of i think we've just said we're, we're kind of not too keen to do any more review shows we feel like yeah. that's that's a well that's been when been drawn for, from enough yeah, uh, that's it. I have thoroughly enjoyed doing a review show that's so backwards and weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it forces you to think about the show in a different way, mm. and like that we started, you know, a week after the show ended. Yeah. Like, if we were going to do it, we had to do it then, and like, yeah, it's been a crazy ride, and yeah, good fucking, good fucking times, man. Yeah, yeah, clinkies again. Yeah. Nice down. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, we're probably going to do a, a series cap episode, but until that time, I've been BT Calloway. That's been Elliot J. O'Neill. Goodbye. And now, our watch has ended. Orange lozenge. Still a lot of fun, that. Orange lozenge. Orange lozenge. Orange lozenge. Orange lozenge. Sausage lozenge. Opera Uma. Oka Puma. <laughs> still my favourite, I think. <laughs> like, there are better ones, but that's still just fun. <laughs> that Oprah and Uma own an Oka Puma. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we are good. Good together. for a podcast. All right. <clears throat> Hello out there, you bastards at the... Ah. <laughs>